All right, today I'm gonna to give you two exercises that work on spinal stability, core stability, while you're moving your arms. So these exercises are not static exercises for the whole body, like a plank or a side plank or anything like that. They're not dynamic exercises where two arms and two legs are moving like a wheel rollout or something like that, or a sit up. They are static for the core and the lower back, but dynamic for opposite arm, opposite leg, so contralateral. Now, there's a person who asked me about what do you do for oblique anterior and posterior slings. So this is gonna answer that question. So when you are walking, okay, when you're sprinting, when you're walking, you're trying to keep this part reasonably stable. It moves and rotates a bit, but you need a stable base of support to move your arm and leg on. If it's moving all over the shop, you're gonna leak some energy, it's not gonna be as stable, okay? Now, when you're doing your back to try and get strength here, you need a posterior sling the most, but the abdominals in the front need to support that. So when you think of back strength and core strength, and you're moving your arm and your leg, you want this to be stable. Now, if you just use your back and don't use your core, you know the back has to do more work, and that's where people get really tight in their lower back. All right. So the two exercises I'm gonna give you, one is on your front and one is on your back. And they're gonna be very familiar and you're gonna go, oh, I've seen those before. But today you're gonna to learn out why you're gonna use them. Now one of them is a bird dog and one of them is a dead bug. Let's work on the dead bug first because that works on your core strength. And it's probably good to put that on first or do that one exercise first. So you fire things up here and get used to that and it works on your anterior posterior stability then you can go into your dead bug afterwards, which works on your sort of rotational stability when you're on your front. So let's have a look at this dead bug. Now, you've probably done dead bugs before and these have been around for ages, but I use them for a static movement here, a dynamic movement there to teach you when you are moving your body, when you're walking or when you're running, to stop your spine moving this way, okay? Now, if you look at any professional sprinter, they're core if you like their trunk here on their lower abdominals stay in one spot they don't move around when they when they sprint because they've learned to stabilize this really well so when they move their arm and their leg this doesn't get jolted around so that's what i want you to try and do because if you can train this here to be stable you'll have a lot better strength in your lower back when you lift and move so first thing when you're on your back get your neutral spine meaning you shouldn't be able to put your hand all the way through all right, you certainly shouldn't have it flat down like that. So don't try and think that I've got a flat in my back. I want it neutral. Now, it's different for every person, but neutral really means halfway between fully rounded and fully extended. So just try and find that spot. That's where I need your body to keep stable there. I want you to keep in that position. And the way you do that is think about, okay, if I have one hand here, I've got to keep my spine sort of on my hand. So when I move my arm and my leg, I don't want my spine arching off the back. That's primary number one. The second thing I want you to do is try and train your core correctly, and that is not pushing it out. Okay, so when you try and raise your arm and your leg like that, you shouldn't be pushed out like that, straining. Okay, if you're doing that, either that exercise is too hard for you, or you just not have, you need to learn how to switch on your pelvic floor a little bit more to keep that tummy flat. And remember, it's not about hollowing out, it's about flattening and keeping it toned. So if you think tummy flat, back and neutral, those two things working together, that's what you've got to keep stable. So if we come down to the dead bug, if I work on neutral, I tighten this to keep it stable, I breathe up here, I then have to set myself up. And the way you set yourself up is if you can keep that, raise one leg, and you have gotta think about this, keep breathing up here. When you're about to raise this leg, what you don't do is push up. Okay, so keep it flat, keep it flat, and then raise. Now even that, and especially in Pilates, is an exercise in itself, that's tabletop. So to get to a dead bug, you have to be able to do a tabletop and keep this flat and not default by pushing it up. So if you can't do that, you need to not do a dead bug and go back to doing a tabletop. That's in one of my other videos. But if you can get the tabletop and you can keep that flat, then what you do, 
Because when you have your arms up, you're going to go opposite arm, opposite leg. So as I raise my right arm backwards, my left leg is going to go down at the same rate. Now as you do that, the weight of your leg will want to make you arch your back like that, which we don't want to do, right? We want to keep it flat in here. So with the arm, what that's going to do is add a bit of load, make it harder for my ribs. My ribs are going to want to flare out. So I have to use my abdominals here to keep my ribs down as my arms go out. So don't let the arm flare your ribs up and do that because you're going to lose the control, lose that tension stability in your abdominals and you're going to start arching your back. And when you start doing that, your back's going to kick in, you're going to get a sore back. So make sure when you're here, opposite arm, opposite leg, slowly down, keeping this flat all the way as far as you can go hover. Now you can either spend some time there, like two seconds, 10 seconds, whatever you want to do, or you can bring it straight back. If you don't have enough endurance at that point, opposite arm, opposite leg, see I'm doing my right leg now. I'm trying to think neutral, trying to think control here. If I hold it, I'll start shaking and then I come back, okay? So this one here, opposite arm, opposite leg, works on a lot of things. The hardest part is trying to keep your spine in neutral. The second hardest part is the endurance of your anterior abdominals, which does build up your abdominal strength. I like this one, it's like the, it's like the front plank that builds up your abdominal strength, but also it does give you a bit of hip flexor strength as well. Because when you've got weak lower abdominals, you usually have weak hip flexors. So this is going to teach you to get a bit of hip flex or isometric strength through that. You know, you get the isometric work here by holding up and then the dynamic work, the eccentric load there in that hip flexor. So you're one of these people who've got tight hip flexors or weak hip flexors. This is a great exercise for you to start working on that while you're doing your dead bug. Okay, so this is a really nice one to do. Remember, it's about anterior tilt here. It's about abdominal control, trying to stop your body defaulting to that sort of doming effect. It's going to build some endurance and strength in your anterior abdominals because at the end of the day, for back pain and strength with lifting, strength of picking things up, if you don't have good anterior abdominal switching on here, you don't have that strength there, your back's going to do all the work or there's just not enough support there, and you're going to get back pain again. Okay, so yes, lots and lots of abdominals will help your lower back, but this sort of exercise is going to help you more in a functional position like walking, running, sprinting, like that, okay? It's gonna give you that stability, learning how to hold while you move something else. Good one to prep into, into the bird dog. Now, the bird dog is done, you know, so many times, so many videos. I've done this a few times, but I wanna reiterate on this. If you can work on that, you'll get tapping in to your posterior sling, okay? Meaning, from your lat, down your back, across into your lumbar fascia here and into your glute, okay? So there's a sort of a fascial sling that goes one way, another one goes the other way. If you can connect the lat to the glute, you'll get some tension in that lower back which gives you some support, support for lifting, support for the spine, support for the discs. And if you have that on, with this on, you imagine like you've got a tension there and a wrap around that spinal column that's sitting in the middle is going to be so well supported when you want to change direction, sprint, shear load, pick things up. Okay, so it's really, really important that this bird dog is not just about stability and the, how to balance. So it's not just about can you balance there and hold it there. You're actually teaching your brain to use muscles connected to that fascia to tighten it to give you stability. Okay, so when you do a bird dog, in all fours, the same rules apply about your back, like we were doing on our, on our back when we were doing our dead bug. This can't sit in flexion. You also can't sit in full extension, let it sag like that and stick your bum out. You've got to be in neutral, so you've got to find where that neutral position is, and then your job is to keep that neutral. Also, your job is to, if you're looking at it this way, is to not sway left and right when you move one arm, one leg. So, if I'm switched on here and I raise one arm forward, you may find, oh, yeah, I don't move there. But if you watch me, if I do it badly, I'll do this. Okay? Now, that's, not, that's me probably not trusting my arm. Okay? If you sh shift away like that, 
you've either got not enough strength in your upper body or you're just not used to it. And you've got to tell your body to go, I need to stay weight bearing on that arm. And when I move that leg, I need to connect my abdominals to try and keep myself stable. So what you've got to think about when you do that is one arm's planted, use your abdominals to connect almost like your anterior sling to your right knee. The arm and the leg that's raised, that's your lat and your glute that we talked about before. So then you're actually going to get two things crossing over. So from here, cause on, right arm forward, make a fist, pull back. There's my lat. Okay. Then I've got to turn those abdominals on, tighten my pelvic floor a little bit, slide that leg, push my heel back so my leg is straight, make sure I'm pressed away. Tighten my tummy, breathe, and hold it there for a count of 10. So my lat's on, and this glute's on. And those two things are crossing over here and giving me that tension I need in my lumbar fascia, my thoracolumbar fascia, to give me that stability. So there's one way, you might do 10 seconds, maybe 15 of that, probably not more than that. And then straight into the other side. Make sure every time you're neutral, you're pressed away, one arm goes forward, keep stable, keep breathing, put weight through that right arm, slide that leg, push your heel, straighten your knee, don't arch your back, keep that core on, lift this up a bit, pull it down, hold it there. Okay, and a little bit of shaking probably means you're doing the right thing. You're working really hard statically in the body, and that's what that shaking is. So that bird dog is going to work really nicely. It's one of those exercises you're not going to feel like you're doing much of a core workout. You feel like your whole body's like, God, that's difficult. Okay? You won't feel anything in your back, or you shouldn't feel anything in your back. But this is the sort of exercise that later you're going to feel better. You know, the two hours afterwards, or the next day when you're doing your exercise in the gym, or you're doing other sort of running exercises, your back will probably feel better because you've switched everything on. Okay? And the more you do that and lay up on that week to week to week, you're learning a movement pattern, especially with a dead bug as well. You're learning movement patterns to control this spine and keep it in neutral. And you're telling your brain, keep this neutral, keep it stable while I move my arm and the leg so there's no shearing forces going on. What it'll give you is a, a stronger back because you can last longer. You can keep that neutral spine and last longer. You'll be able to walk for longer. Um, and it just gives you more endurance down the track, which you'll find that will just take away some of your back pain. So those are my, not top two, but man, my two that I use the most when you want to work on a static spinal system and a dynamic limb system. That's enough for this week. See you next time.